Tommy's career was like a bright flash. A great future was to await him. He was the embodiment of the American dream, but failing to stop in time, he took a step into the abyss from which he did not get out. Today we'll talk about the legendary fight that ended Tommy Morrison's career and reveal all the details of the legendary fight against Lennox Lewis, known as laying it all on the line. In the early 90s, the American public dreamed of seeing the Lewis Morrison fight. Why? The answer is simple hatred of Lennox and exaltation of Tommy. Lewis was a hellish mixture of British, with Jamaican roots, who has Canadian citizenship. Whether Business Morrison, Golden Boy, Duke of Boxing, the embodiment of the American dream. In 1992, Mike Tyson was behind bars. Tommy was considered as Iron's replacement on the throne of the King's Division. After the premiere of the film Rocky V, where Morrison played the role of boxer Tommy Gunn, even people far from fisticuffs learned about the Duke. By this time, Lennox Lewis, by decision of the WBC, became the champion without a fight and, thereby, only added negative to his person from the American public. The public started talking about the unification fight, Lewis vs. Morrison, stranger against his fighter. The fighters' managers, Frank Maloney and Bill Cotton, sat down at the negotiating table. The fighters had one more title to defend before the unification bout. Lewis, not without difficulty, completed the task in a duel with Frank Bruno, and Tommy was destroyed by Michael Bent in a minute and a half of the first round. The champion was hit on the floor three times by bent smashing blows. Few expected this turn of events. The fight with Lewis was canceled. Tommy was no longer world champion and lost his promised fee of $7.5 million. Furthermore, in the media, Lennox lashed out at a negligent opponent, which caused a new portion of negativity in his address. America hated Lewis. Sweet revenge, the feeling that all the haters of the Briton experienced when he lost the title to Oliver McCall. But the former champion did not look for excuses. He took the blame and changed the coaching staff. Lennox returned to the ring under the guidance of Emmanuel Stewart. It was already a different boxer. By this time, Tommy was feverish both in the ring and in his personal life. Scandal after scandal, Allegations of beatings by ex-wives and girlfriends, nightly adventures and clashes with the police, health and weight problems. Unconvincing performances in the ring gave way to bright victories. In June 1995, Tommy gave a fantastic fight against Donovan Ruddock. Lennox was number one in the WBC rankings, Morrison was number two. On October 7th, 1995, the two former champions crossed their gloves in the ring for a minor IBC title. This moment was left behind. The public didn't care what title was at stake. She had long dreamed of seeing this fight and, for some reason, still believed in the success of her scandalous favorite. The McCall fight, how to ease his way into a bout, not Using looking- this jab like he is, it's going to be very difficult for as formidable a picture as there is in the heavyweight division. Both fighters fought a conservative first round with neither man establishing much power-wise, but Lewis was able to effectively and efficiently use his signature left jab to keep Morrison on the defensive and had little trouble with Morrison from the second round onwards. Another right hand miss as the left hook that Morrison does have. Lewis continued to use that strategy in the second, but as the second minute of the round came to a close, Morrison attacked Lewis with a combination to the body that he followed up with a strong right hand. Lewis was able to dodge Morrison's attempt and countered with a quick left hook that caused Morrison to briefly fall on one knee. Delivered inside. If it is, it's one of the most impressive punches we've ever seen causing referee Mills Lane to rule it a knockdown after which Morrison had to take a mandatory standing eight count. 
The punch also opened a cut above Morrison's right eye that would hinder him for the rest of the fight. That right hand up around his head like a gate. To the straight right after the opening exchange time in the decade of the 90s that Tommy Morrison's been down. Once he gets his side, he's... Lewis continued to effectively use his left hand in round three, outboxing Morrison to win his third consecutive round. Third round coming to a close, relatively cautious round for Lewis. Morrison rebounded with a strong fourth round, winning the round on two of the judges' scorecards. He's got just said it's almost going to be like you have to be very careful of that right hand right there. And that's punches. Morrison may be landing the harder shots, although there was another. Blood from the right eye of Morrison again after that left hook by Lewis. Morrison stepping in with the right. And lands a chopping right as the round. Lewis, however, regained control of the fight in the fifth and was able to gain a second knockdown of Morrison towards the end of the round with a right uppercut that again caused Morrison to fall on one knee. Long right hands, Lewis, in this fight as we've often seen him. But it's that short one that Tommy Morrison... Morrison was able to answer the referee's count and hung on to survive the remainder of the round. And that right eye is looking pretty bad. This fight is basically over. The combination that Marshall throws and they're insane. Though his right eye was now almost completely shut and he was now well behind Lewis on the scorecards due to the two knockdowns, Morrison and his corner decided to continue on with fight, hoping that Morrison could finally surprise Lewis with his dangerous left hook and possibly score a knockout victory like he had in his previous fight against Ruddock. Lewis, however, continued to dominate the exhausted Morrison and drop Morrison to the canvas for the third time 50 seconds into the round. Goes Morrison again. Morrison, so he know all he had to do was hit him. This first one, that's the jab that really did the damage. That shows you how weak... Coming a blowout. Four. Morrison again answered the referee's count, but Lewis continued his assault and was able to score the deciding knockdown around 30 seconds later with a strong left hook. After taking a terrible beating. Lane's getting very close to a stoppage here. You get that sense. Down goes Morrison again, and I wonder if Mills has seen it. Lane gave Morrison another standing eight counts, but as Morrison was clearly in no condition to continue, decided to stop the fight, and Lewis was rewarded with the third consecutive technical knockout victory of his comeback. For Lennox, the fight with Tommy was the first step on the way to the top of the heavyweight division, and for Morrison it was a step into the abyss. In February 1996, before his scheduled fight with Arthur Withers, Duke was diagnosed with HIV. He connected the cause of his illness with a wild lifestyle, which, however, surprised few people. Endless investigations and scandals shrouded the life of the former champion. He lost not only to Lennox, but also to himself. Boxing experts are still wondering if Morrison ever had a chance to beat a fighter like Lewis, or is it all a figment of the sick imagination of the American dream? Tommy's career was like a bright flash. The public wanted to see him as a replacement for Mike Tyson and happily forgot about the Duke when Iron was released. Morrison's talent cannot be denied. But boxing is not 36 minutes of fighting. It's a way of life. Sports require maximum return to get the result. You need to spend your resources, time and effort. Tommy didn't want to give anything. He just wanted to take everything from life. But to resist the fruits of success is no less difficult than to reach the top.